Welcome to PR Talk, sponsored by the PRSA of Oregon and part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. This is your host, Amy Rosenberg, founder of Veracity and author of A Modern Guide to Public Relations. Help other people find our podcast by subscribing, rating, giving us a review, or sharing on social media. Okay, well, here we go. It is your host, Amy Rosenberg, recording solo her last podcast episode for PR Talk. It has been six and a half years and 192 episodes and around 40,000 downloads later that I am deciding to quote unquote pause the podcast uh, because it's so hard for me to quit anything uh, if you can't tell because six and a half years, that's a long time to do a podcast, I guess. And if you think about our company, I, we're on going on 15 years. But don't worry, I'm not quitting the company. I'm just kind of pausing this podcast because, well, you know, life moves on. And again, it's been six and a half years. And I think kind of when things like this start to kind of feel hard, I think it's a good sign to kind of rethink things. And um, in the beginning, it was so fun. And it's always been very fun to record the podcast, very rewarding. And I have learned so much. And I hope you have too. And I have appreciated all of the guests that have come on because Again, I have really learned a lot. Oftentimes in my conversations, I'm going back to reference what various guests have said. And so, I mean, I've relied on it so much and actually in different ways than you might think, not just in how to do PR, but more so in kind of how to operate as a PR firm and as a businesswoman and um, new, just new ideas. And so I'm just going to kind of run through the history of the podcast to kind of just give you the flavor. And the one thing I will say, though, is that all of the episodes will be ideally kept for you all for, forever. Um, and that's something I'm really proud of to see 192 episodes all lined up in a pretty row in the platform and all platforms, frankly. And <clears throat> that's just kind of my deal is like, I just like to have a, a quote unquote body of work. And I actually wrote about this in um, my LinkedIn newsletter slash blog post that kind of talks about this and how, how we kind of need something sometimes to look back on and to honor the work that we've done. And I think um, keeping it in the platform will help not only honor the work that I've done, but also the generosity that all of our our uh, guests have given us by appearing on the podcast and offering their wisdom. And frankly, it is just amazing how these guests are telling us maybe what you could consider trade secrets, right? And so uh, to kind of explain, I'll go back to the beginning. So to take you through, through the history, uh, six and a half years ago, I was... Um, training a new employee, Connor Lobenstein. And I found myself talking, talking, talking all the time. And I realized, oh, maybe I should record this in various parts, you know, various topics, and I might just have a podcast. And that was kind of when I was really into listening to podcasts. And I still am. But you know, that was when I just first got into it. And so luckily, Connor actually had some audio experience. And so we kind of did a little experiment. And honestly, that's how I can do lots of things is like things you might think are scary is just by calling it an experiment <laughs> and kind of like, well, nothing's writing on this. This is just for us. And I'm not even telling anybody how often I am going to download new episodes. Right. But of course, you know, very quickly, well, a, we learned that just, talking Connor and myself, that's not super exciting. And so very quickly, I had the idea to interview the media, because I thought, well, they can tell us our how to do our jobs the best. So of course, I started with the media in my backyard. But um, anyway, so we so we ran around did all these interviews with media. And of course, in the beginning, I was really nervous, because I thought, who the heck do I think I am thinking I could pitch 
well, first of all, I have, we have hard enough time pitching the media as it is. Why would I think that they would come and talk to me on a podcast? Well, it turns out that it was not too hard because the media, you know, they, they're giving people and we do have some relationships, but they, but they want to tell you how to, they want to help. Most humans want to help others. And so whenever we can tap into somebody else's knowledge, they're often excited to give that knowledge. So we started with the media and just, you know, after a while, all the tips kind of sounded the same, just to be honest. And, you know, because I'll just tell you, actually, PR isn't all, it's hard, right? I'm not going to say it's not hard because that's misleading. But some of the kind of tenets of PR are a little basic. And so after a while, we thought, well, let's just start, we meaning me, I think Connor had, had left by then uh, to, you know, expand his career. But so I thought, well, let's just also interview thought leaders in the space. And, you know, at that time, I was really into search engine optimization and had a lot of friends in that space. So started kind of leaning heavily on those experts, but then, you know, quickly found so many other ways to talk about or dig into PR, whether that's content or software, PR software. I mean, the sky is the limit, right? With PR and various types of PR. So public information officer, what the heck is that, right? Uh, To regular PR people. And then, so now, you know, I did that. And then, oh, COVID. (laughs) And so I just have to say, COVID. So this podcast turned into a quote unquote lifeline for me during COVID. Um, because, and honestly, I think I kept it going through COVID, you know, who knows how long this would have lasted, but I kept it going through COVID because it it was helpful to connect with people and I needed something fun. I mean, you know, we can only do so much from our homes And it just got really exciting to kind of maybe try to bring in some video aspect and just interview more people that were a little outside the realm for us. So like mental health experts that used to be uh, media. Uh, So that was Sheila Hamilton. That was exciting. Um, And then, you know, anyone from an organization type person, because I need help organizing to, um, well, of course, diversity, equity and inclusion. So I just want to be, you know, honest that after uh, George Floyd happened, I did look back and think, oh, my God, I have not. What the hell have I been doing to in all of this? Right. What, What is my part in white supremacy. Okay. And so I looked and it's like, I did not have that many people of color. So I of course interviewed some people and I thought, well, I'm not just going to stop there. I'm not going to have, you know, a token interview. And so we interviewed, we, I'm always a we person, even though it's me, um, interviewed just lots of people on lots of topics and people of color, not just talking about DEI, because of course, there's a lot we can learn from in other areas. And so, you know, I looked at what I did and I thought, I have to make a concerted effort here. And that's what DEI is about um, within a company. We have to make concerted efforts. We can't just say, well, I don't know anyone who is diverse. And so that's who, that's just your problem. Well, no, you know, like there's the internet, we can reach out. And anyway, but the thing about PR people is we love connecting, right? And so there's a lot of diverse PR people out there in the world. And honestly, if you are a diverse PR person in Portland, please hit me up because I want to add you to a list of referral sources. I want to refer you. Um, anyway, if you want, sometimes you know, I want to be thoughtful about what kind of clients we refer out because uh, I know you know we can get blasted by a lot of unnecessary leads. But anyway, so that was a tangent. But so you know, we have that was very rewarding doing that. Now, I did have a few little like tangents within the podcast, as I do as you can tell just by listening to me, that might happen. So right when COVID happened, um, my daughter and I started a 
little podcast that was kind of like put onto my podcast called Fika Talk. And my daughter coined the term because she's very creative, the, the um, you know, the talk kind of to to coincide with PR talk. And anyway, so Fika is what people drink in, um, is it just Sweden or Scandinavia? Now I don't remember. But it's an afternoon tradition of having coffee and treats. And so during her spring break, we, we recorded a bunch of episodes talking about cool things like, you know, cause you know, you can only talk about PR so much. So we were talking about work-life balance and all these other topics anyway. And so we did that just for like a week and then she had other things to do. So we stopped. Um, and so that was kind of fun, but, Oh, and then of course, another tangent might seem like my videos from, um, a modern guide to PR did a bunch of videos to explain that book that I wrote. Um, and so those are still uploading because I didn't realize we hadn't uploaded all of them. So you'll be seeing all of those uploaded throughout the weeks. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just, it really has been an honor. And again, it, it is hard to, to end things for me. Um, I'm, I'm a quote unquote long hauler to the extreme, Um, but you know, I think the thing is, is I'm, I'm a writer first and foremost. And so what's interesting is of course I wrote about this first before recording this and now, and I've been delaying recording this because we delay things we don't want to do or what we're not sure about. But, um, I think, you know what, I think it's time to do other writing projects, whether that is a second book, which I've started that will expand a modern guide to PR to, well, not expand it to condense it because, you know, that was quite verbose. So I want to make it easier for people to read, but also to relate to um, small business owners that want to do PR themselves. Um, Because, you know, who I wrote this for really ended up being PR people. And so that's done giving PR people advice on how to get into the field, how to start uh, their career. Now I can kind of expand that to think about possibly other things like beyond PR or how a small business might um, approach B- PR on their own. So, you know, there's the new book and various, I kind of want to create worksheets off the book and then planners, PR planners and content planners. Uh, and we're talking all paper, man. Like I am not doing the digital right now. Um, except, well, everything's also digital, but we're, we're leading with paper, no software BS. I, you know, I just can't handle that right now. I am 45. So there's that, but, um, (laughs) so, um, and the other thing is, is pretty soon my um, first book will be turned into an audio book. So if you don't want to read and you want to walk or, you know, run errands while you listen to me drone on, like I have been doing on this podcast, you can um, download the audio book soon and just follow us on social and we'll let you know when all of that is live. But anyway, we really appreciate your support and you know who we really appreciate it. I have to say, first of all, thank you um, to PRSA Oregon for sponsoring us and for getting our podcast out there. It is very helpful and to everybody, not just us. And so we really appreciate that. And um, I do want to thank my wingman and wingwoman who um, I talk about in my blog post, my business partner, Mike Rosenberg, he really helped produce, well, not helped, he produced and promoted the podcast, doing all the technical aspects, which I never would have done. So I never would have had this podcast without him. And then Kaylin Teagle has done a wonderful job of taking over that technical stuff while he expands his horizons. And then she got really into all of this and I needed some of that excitement. So she brought new ideas to me, really cool social posts, but also good um, interviewees. So I really appreciate her support, uh, not just on the podcast, but in every way. 
And then, of course, the PR Talk guests. And I do want to give a shout out to the Marketing Podcast Network, the MPN. That is a group of marketing podcasts that we um, share advertising revenue. And so I'm sure I did not participate to the fullest potential, but I really appreciate the MPN and Jason Falls who brought us into the fold. And then again, most importantly, PR Talk listeners, we would not have had this without you. So we appreciate it. And I'm sure there's tons of other resources out there that we'll be talking about and sharing for you. And then hopefully, you know, maybe we'll have another podcast someday talking about something like content or something different. Okay, well, it has been an honor to be in your ears for so long, and we love you. Bye. Thanks for listening. For more PR insight, be sure to check out Amy's book, A Modern Guide to Public Relations, at prtalk.co. Also, please subscribe, rate, or leave us a review.